that's the beauty of it because the body's always in the present it's your mind that can be in the past or in the future but when you work with the body it brings you into that present and presence because i always say how you flow is how you glow <laughs> and, and i really see you as a steward of somatic wisdom because you guide others on their journey towards self-discovery and empowerment to reclaim their physiological sovereignty can you share a personal epiphany or transformative moment that solidified your commitment to somatic practice and healing yeah as you were sharing that i was reflecting actually on just how much this work has shaped and changed me again has blown past any notions of what i thought was going to be possible for myself yeah growing up i was a very quiet kid very quiet did not raise my hand in school ever did not engage with people unless they engaged with me first like i was just not one to get out of my comfort zone at all if i could help it and as i became an adult i saw just how much that was holding me back that i did not feel comfortable seizing opportunities or advocating for myself and it led to me feeling like i was in a lot of imbalanced relationships and really dissatisfied with the direction that my life was going and there was just so much internal conflict there because a much deeper part of me knew how capable I was, how smart I was, the ambition that I had, the dreams that I wanted to fulfill. That was very real to me. And I knew that there was a really beautiful person underneath this conditioning that was don't rock the boat. Don't do anything that's going to make people want to look at you because you don't want to give them any reason to get in trouble which was a big fear of mine that I just could not tolerate conflict. So I compensated by doing everything in my control to not give anyone a reason to have conflict with me, which resulted in me being a rather a shell of a person. I didn't have anything to offer to the world because of that. And I didn't understand that initially. I was just like, I don't understand why there's such a wall here that I can't break through to show up as the person that I know that I am. And I hated the person I was portraying myself to be to the rest of the world because of that lack of information and that lack of connection of like why I was responding this way is what led to all of that internal conflict and restriction. I really turned that against myself and resented who I was. And it was through making these connections about how my early life experience shaped my fear of conflict. And it makes total sense that if you grow up in an environment with conflict and you don't have any control over that, making yourself as small as possible to stay out of the way of that conflict, of the debris of chaos, it makes sense that I did that. And I have a lot of respect for my body's intelligence to have done that. It served me at that time. But as an adult, it was my responsibility to learn the skills to leave behind those stories that I can handle conflict now. I am competent enough to advocate for myself and perhaps not every experience that I am perceiving as being dangerous or potentially rife with conflict actually has conflict. It was amazing for me to recognize how much fear I was carrying throughout my life where I was constantly perceiving other people to be potentially argumentative or quote unquote dangerous to me that I had to be on guard when really that didn't exist. That was all of my past experience coloring the way I was perceiving the present moment that I got to let go of, that I got to release that fear and realize I can ask for what I want and I can show up as the person that I want to and advocate for myself and go after big things. And that does not mean that people are going to be out to get me, out to hurt me, shut me down, or say no. That if I'm working with the flow of life and following my intuition, things are working out really well for me following that path of doing what feels right. I am not going to be meeting a tremendous amount of resistance or roadblocks to do these things. I could have never believed if you had told me even 10 years ago that public speaking would be part of my job, that I would be working for myself, that vulnerability in those things was so inconceivable for me to have the capacity to do. And I owe it all to somatic work, working through those layers of that fawn response, that deep freeze of, it just felt like paralysis. That doesn't have to be my reality anymore.
And I could have never imagined that I would be in this space to be able to do this type of work with this type of emotional range. It's such a beautiful gift. And that's why I'm so passionate about it, as I think a lot of people can relate to that experience of deep down knowing their truth about who they are, but feeling like there's just so much challenge in how do I connect these two things, the way that I know that I am versus the way that I have practiced showing up my entire life. And if you don't have that language and you don't have that framework of understanding, it can feel so hard to figure out how to make that path. And that is my passion, kind of being a Sherpa of these things, like bringing people to the place that they want to be, that there is connection. And I've walked this path and I will do everything that has helped me and the skill set that I've developed to help you get there too, to help make sense of that experience and process the things that need to be processed for that to be possible.